right, welcome to the Modern Revelation Digest podcast. We have a guest today. This is Laura Nance. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she is a great friend of mine. She's in my ward here at BYU, Idaho. I mean, you know, in Idaho. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're in Idaho. And um, so she's been studying for a year and a half, you said, or two years? A year and a half. Okay. It's been off and on. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so she's studying allied health or pre... Pre-dental hygiene. Yes. Yes. Awesome. And she's married to a wonderful husband, Seth, and they have a dog named Brody? Brody. Brody. He's okay. a black lab. Yeah, nice. So today we wanted to talk about personal revelation and how that has to do with our modern revelation as well. And so we have a few awesome uh, points to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to kind of like conjure up conversation by asking this question. How do you think having a testimony of the prophet can help with gaining personal revelation? I feel like in a lot of ways, um, personally, well, we know that the prophet is really big on seeking personal revelation, which, side comment, I think is so important um, for people outside of our faith to know, too, Mm -hmm. because I've had people question me, Mm -hmm. and they're like, well, if the prophet told you to jump off a bridge, would you do it? (laughs) And my little 16-year-old mind was like, duh, yeah, I'd do it. (laughs) But as I came to gain a stronger testimony of the prophet, I came to understand more that the prophet's not going to ask us anything, ask us to do anything that's against God's will. You know, mm-hmm. he probably won't ask us to jump off a bridge. And that's not even the principle behind it. It's if he did ask us to jump off a bridge, then there'd obviously be <laughs> some eternal reason <laughs> for it. Yeah. I don't know what, but I think just alone knowing that the prophet's purpose is to point us to Jesus Christ and to help us get some clarity in a really muddy world. Yeah. Um, that alone just, it's comforting. It's, it's great to have a prophet. Mm-hmm. And, but back to my original point, um, he's so big on personal revelation. Like, he wants us to ask the Lord, ask for ourselves, like, if what he's teaching is true, mm-hmm. or if what he's asking us to do is the right thing to do. And with that, having a prophet really just enhances your own personal revelation. Yeah. I like what you said about the part jumping off the bridge, <laughs> because, like, honestly, there's a lot of things like that that are just really hard to hear for a lot of people, and they need to gain their own insight about it so that they can feel peace Mm -hmm. and um there was something I was struggling with recently that um like we just had general conference and I was struggling with a topic and the president Oaks talked about the thing I was wondering about and I was just like "Ah, I don't know still because it's really hard for me to hear this right now and I knew he would say it because it's just general conference they just always say the same things but it's good but anyway afterward I was studying some more about it and I felt peace again and so it was like I had to do that work and it was definitely like I know they're going to say what's true but I have to do that work and and uh, do my part you know right personal yeah. revelation does take a lot of personal effort yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's all of our like <clears throat> personal responsibility too and we can't just keep depending on somebody else because if we keep doing that then eventually we're gonna start wondering like wait do I really believe this you know true and and it might actually be pretty weak our our testimony oh yeah yeah oh yeah also um something that might like speak like like, uh what's the word like uh be relatable to other people listening is um, when I was about to have a baby, like when I was deciding to, I was like, yeah, the prophet said obviously that everything would be fine, you know, <laughs> if you have a baby, and even if you're going to school, it's going to be great. And I was so naive <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't realize how hard it would be to finish school as a child. Mm-hmm. But I know that 
what they say is true, but I still wish I had, like, thought about it a little more Mm -hmm. and, like, really made that decision by myself. Right. You know? And the thing is, um, we know that the, the Lord will always provide a way. So even if we do, like, I wouldn't say it was a naive decision. It was definitely a faithful decision. Um, but just because it seemed like a little, like you weren't prepared for it. And because the prophets teach us like, yeah, have babies, Mm -hmm. have a family, go to school, do all of it at the same time. It's great. (laughs) It doesn't mean that it's going to be easy just Mm -hmm. because it's right. I think more Mm -hmm. times than not when things are right, it's actually a lot harder. Yeah. (laughs) And there's a reason for that because it's so rewarding and it's so Mm -hmm. eternal. Like family and education, that's stuff that you're going to take with you after this life Mm -hmm. and stuff but that was just my little two cents on that (laughs) i love your baby i'm glad you had a baby (laughs) i love him (laughs) well another question i have is what did joseph smith do that helped him receive personal revelation what what have you noticed that he did we were actually i feel like i've studied this specific question so many times because of like well, devotional seminary, even being a missionary, yeah. and uh, what's it called? We had it, EFY. Uh-huh. In Boise, it was called BYS. But anyways, they always ask us, like, what are the steps that Joseph took to receive his answer? Mm. Um, I think the one that really stood out the most to me was that he he was seeking it long before he actually went to seek it, yeah. you know? He was doing everything he could, going to every church that he Mm -hmm. knew about and just listening and really taking in what they were saying, not necessarily questioning or attacking what they were saying or even maybe even disagreeing, but just actually going with open-mindedness and um, doing his own scripture study too. Mm -hmm. I think for me at least, that's how I receive most of my personal revelation is through the scriptures not saying that scriptures always tell you exactly what to do, but it brings a spirit yeah. that will give you the clarity to do that. So when I think of that question, I always think of how much he prepared for the big event where he yeah. received his answer, don't go to any churches. <laughs> but um, yeah, just doing a lot of stuff on your own, but also with other people, going to people who also believe and have the same goals and desires yeah having that support is important yeah now more than ever yeah yeah Yeah. always having people because when you're I feel like for me now it's hard to seek on my own Mm -hmm. it's hard to sometimes I forget where to look or what to do even when it's like right in front of my face but talking to people and hearing their testimonies and getting their advice it helps a lot yeah Definitely. I think he also, um, so like you said, he listened a lot to people and he was very patient with that whole process. And I think that also it was a sanctifying process that as he was learning more and more, he probably wanted to change and that prepared him for Mm -hmm. the answer that he needed. Yeah, that's a good point. I never really thought of that, Mm -hmm. but he did. He had to be really prepared. and The Lord does that to us too. Sometimes it feels like he hates us and he's punishing (laughs) us, but he's really just preparing us for better things yeah so definitely love it (laughs) so i want to know what tools you think that we're blessed with in these modern times that help us to receive personal revelation so many (laughs) technology is a huge one yeah it can be such a hindrance too that's very true um i just want to keep going back to like talking to people and stuff i think human connection is so so big yeah and social media can help with that exactly there's a lot of things that people share all all day long (laughs) yeah exactly i could be better (laughs) i used to be one of those people that shared a lot but um no i i love seeing how people can just brighten my day in little ways just through little general conference quotes or scriptures Mm -hmm. and stuff um those little reminders they might not fulfill my spiritual hunger but they're like little snacks Mm -hmm. you know 
um, I used to make an, ex- an excuse, like, I don't need to study my scriptures because my social media has <laughs> so many <laughs> like, people posting. <laughs> but I have to keep, yeah, they're snacks. You yeah. know, they're good, and they kind of remind you more throughout mm-hmm. the day. Um, but it's definitely not a full-blown meal. So there's lots of tools, lots of yeah. ways that we can um, kind of get prepared to receive revelation yeah. sometimes we may even receive answers to our prayers through social media and stuff i know yeah. i have yeah 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 definitely cool and then also like just having the app and all those resources in your phone is just amazing like oh. i'm sure that all the prophets of old are like super jealous <laughs> <I know. laughs> they're, like, they're like are you kidding what? me <laughs> you, you have all this information at your fingertips and you don't even use it <laughs> you don't even use it that's true i would love to see the prophet and the apostles just like having their little meetings uh-huh. and they're just like i got a scripture for that and they're just like i'd love to see them on their phones like yeah. using the scriptures all the time <laughs> i want to know how they use it like because yeah. i'm sure they use it to the fullest probably. you know yeah there's probably things i don't even know about like sharing techniques <laughs> and, and i i love when they post on social media yeah. oh, they're so cute <laughs> yeah they're really good mm-hmm <laughs> Um, another thing is, how do you think Satan tries to interfere with personal revelation? You kind of talked about how social media can also be a hindrance, but what else do you think? I think really anything. The world is so noisy, Mm -hmm. and it's so easy to forget what's true. And what's there in front of your face. Um, even family. Family can sometimes... I think anything good can be turned around. Satan can mm-hmm. manipulate it so well yeah. to make it... To give it a bad taste. Or to make it seem desirable only to poison you. you know? Right. Like, even things that are like neutral can just become distractions and and they can become like like entertainment that's a vice for me (laughs) like I'm (laughs) like Netflix YouTubers you know all these things I just want to watch all day to get my mind off of whatever worries or stress you know but I could be confronting all that stuff by like asking God for help and prayer and stuff like that yeah like it's not necessarily bad Mm -hmm. you know they're not things that are necessarily putting awful horrible evil Mm -hmm. wicked things in your mind some of them are wholesome and good but there's better ways that we could be using our time um there's things that we could be doing instead to Mm -hmm. come closer to god yeah we can always be better yeah i'm like i feel like (laughs) such a hypocrite right now (laughs) there's always gonna be a better version of us at some point that's true oh i love that (laughs) that's a good point yeah, it's cute. <laughs> so, how do you think being, like, people that had to live in the apostasy, how do you think that they might have struggled receiving personal revelation? I think a lot of them really tried. Mm-hmm. They used the tools that they had and yeah. made the most of it. But you see people, like a lot of religions, making reformations and stuff because they recognize this is wrong this is Mm -hmm. not how christ would have done it and they try to change it but it's still in man's way they don't have they didn't have the priesthood to really establish the truth and to lead them along um the path but that being said they were still able to receive a lot of personal revelation it was probably hard to come by it or to know how to get the most that they could right but I believe that anyone who's seeking God and with sincerity and real intent, they'll find him. Yeah. Anywhere, yeah. really. I love that. I was thinking while you were talking that, like, I think the president kind of gives us a very, like, direct way of, like, receiving it. Mm-hmm. But I like how you said that people still do find good and they might have very spiritual experiences but not know exactly everything that they need to know right but of course they'll be taught everything in the afterlife and and they'll receive Mm -hmm. answers there and and it'll be just fine right but yeah another thing I was thinking about when you were talking (laughs) was 
um, how we're all at different levels in life. Not all of us are going to benefit from a revelation of, oh, like, we have a prophet, or oh, mm-hmm. we have um, baptism, or mm-hmm. anything, really. We're all at different levels, and different things are going to be necessary for us at that point. And that's why I think it's so beautiful that God always reveals line upon line, mm-hmm. according to where we're at in our needs yeah. and our desires. Because he's not going to give us something that we're not ready for. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's so patient. He kind of holds yeah. our hand <laughs> all the time. He's like, oh, honey, like, <laughs> I love you. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me teach you a little bit about this and let's keep going. Okay? Yeah. You know? We're really like little children we to are. him. <laughs> uh, I love it. Yeah. I think it's cute. My little sister um, called me. Well, I called her because mm-hmm. I heard she was struggling um and she she grew up not really going to church um just because of family circumstances we just didn't when she was little we just didn't really go to church um not saying that we were we didn't believe or anything but since then um she hasn't really had a testimony or anything and so therefore she doesn't really have a foundation and she's been going through a lot of hard things and has fallen back on less good things Mm -hmm. just because she doesn't know where else to turn to and anyway so I called her just to check in and see how she was doing and she just broke down and she was like I am just like so overwhelmed like she didn't know what to do where to go where to where to find peace and Mm -hmm. religion has always been kind of touchy with her yeah because she sees me as like, oh, I'm the white sheep, the purest white Aww. sheep in all the land, and she's the black sheep. Mm-hmm. That's how she looks at it. So yeah. anytime I'm like, hey, like, let's do this, she's like, no. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so I just try not to bring up too much with her, but yeah. in, in that moment, like, I just felt like I should ask her, like, do you believe in anything? Mm-hmm. And she was like, what? And I was like, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> but then I just said it again, Do you believe in anything? She was like, Well, I've been trying to pray to God. And I was like, That's good. And I said, Have you been going to any churches? Just any church. Mm-hmm. Any church at all. Yeah. And she was like, Well, I have some friends that want me to go, but I don't really agree with what they think and stuff. And I was like, Okay, what about this church you used to go to? She's like, No, I didn't like that because of this. Uh-huh. So I asked her, Okay, if you had like the most ideal church that would bring you the closest to God what would it be? And she said, I just want someone to read out of the Bible, out of the scriptures, and then teach me how it applies to my life. Mm. And I was like, that's so, like, wholesome and pure, because that's, like, pure doctrine. Yeah, pure doctrine. And so I didn't want to, I felt like she was more open, but I still want to push her. So I was like, well, me and Seth are Sunday school teachers. (laughs) And she was like, oh, that's cool. And I was like, well, we talked about Moses this past week and how he delivered the Israelites and everything. And I started worshiping this calf, this gold calf that they made while Moses went up to the mountains. And (laughs) she was like, I was just telling her a story and she was like giggling. And then she was like, what? Like, they would do that? (laughs) But anyway, and I just told her like, those Israelites just forgot. Yeah. They just forgot how to worship, and they just went back to what they were used to in Egypt yeah. and stuff. And then Moses came back, and he helped them, and gave them the Ten Commandments, and then they knew how to worship, and they knew how to find God. And she was like, wow. She was like, that makes me really want to read the scriptures. Oh. Like, I think I think I want to start doing that. Maybe I should go to church. Maybe I should find a church. And I was like, wow. <laughs> like, I didn't think that that phone call was going to be such a big deal. And it was such a small conversation yeah. that wasn't even big or like super insightful. Like, wow, like God loves us. Oh, yeah. And like, <laughs> you're a child of God. But it was just like a little scripture story that was like, yeah. gave her a little bit of hope. And I, I'd like to say that I received not revelation for her, but revelation to know how to handle the situation yeah. in a gentle way. And because of that like the Lord was able to help her Uh in a little way and help her to feel the spirit that she was able to feel it in that moment because if I had I think if I had gone any like deeper or said anything further she'd just shut down completely you know 
And so I think the Lord knows what we need, how to speak to us according to where we are mm-hmm. in our lives. Because he loves us and he doesn't want us to be scared. He really just wants to comfort us. So yeah. he's not going to overwhelm us with all the meat. <laughs> he's going to give us the milk. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's my long story. I love that. But that was beautiful. Thanks. Thank you. You're definitely a woman of God. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> thank you. I'm just happy for my sister, I think, more than anything. I think it was just heartwarming to see how God works in her heart and mm-hmm. stuff. I don't know. It was more of a teaching lesson for me than to be like, oh, look at what I did. No, yeah. it's not that at all. But thank you for appreciating yeah. my story. <laughs> That's really cool, though. Um, I love it. So, yeah, I wanted to ask, um, like, how did personal revelation help you on your mission? Like, did you have any similar experiences like that out there? Always. Where did you serve again? I served in Carlsbad, California. Yeah. Southern California. Hmm. Every day, personal revelation was so important. I got really depressed on my mission, and I didn't know it. Hmm. It was just hard to do missionary work, and I came home every day feeling really guilty and felt like God was disappointed in me, which nobody should feel like that. But I didn't. I was like, man... The Lord just must have high expectations because I feel like crap, you know? (laughs) Um, I remember this one night I was praying, and I just, like, broke down crying. And I was like, I feel like you're just mad at me. Like, I feel like I'm just doing everything I can, and it's not enough. And I just, I want to go home. Like, I feel like if this pressure is off of me or these expectations are off of me, like... Maybe I'll feel your love again because right now I don't feel loved. Mm -hmm. And I was just crying and being angry. And I just remember feeling just a little bit, not too much, but a little bit of warmth. And Heavenly Father saying, I am so proud of you. And helping me to, to feel that, that I was doing enough that I was successful just for being out there and then I got help (laughs) I got medication and I felt a lot better but um I I think God spoke to me a lot through um well like I said before scriptures and Mm -hmm. um but like little little visions too Mm -hmm. like little little like imaginary things and I was able to write a poem um, based off of a scripture about walking with God. And I still read it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because I don't like to say that I wrote it because it was like from the Spirit and it was for me in that moment. Um, But, and I, I guess it's not exactly like personal revelation, but it was like revelation that was personal to me. Yeah. You know? Kind of like personal scripture. Right, yeah. exactly. Just like little ways that God, he kind of gives you personal tools that you can use to help you because he knows you and he knows yeah. what's going to get through to you. Um, I wish we wrote poems too on my mission. Really? Like that. Yeah. We should share. <laughs> we should share yeah. poems. Definitely. They're powerful. I don't know what it is, but yeah, I think... I think it makes it so special that we can receive personal revelation like that, though. Mm -hmm. That he doesn't just speak to his prophets. Yeah. And he does. But that he speaks to his children, too, as individuals. Yeah. And speaks to us in our language, per se. Definitely. On my mission, I also got depressed, and it happened multiple times. And, um... I never got the help I needed on the mission. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize I needed it. Right. I didn't have the self-worth to like talk about it to my president. And um, I just started losing myself, you know. And like I felt so much darkness. Mm-hmm. And the only thing I kept holding on to is that God loved me. Somehow I knew that. And I just want to testify to everybody that 
like the light comes back and it might feel really dark for a long time but when it comes back everything will all be clear again and you just have to hold on and it'll be okay and and to make the story happy, I did receive help after the mission. <laughs> I met my husband. He was like, you need to go to counseling or get medicine if you need it. And I was like, okay. But, yeah, I've been on a long journey. And I've been doing a lot better lately. Good. <laughs> we love medicine. Yeah. <laughs> and therapy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's good. Uh, it can definitely be hard to receive personal revelation when you just got so many clouds and everything. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's kind of scary. Mm-hmm. You just feel so alone. But there's always light there. Even in the darkness, there's always, like you said, you held on to the fact that God loves you. Yeah. There's always some, some light, you know, that you can find and hold on to, even if it takes a long time to find it, but it's still there. Yeah. We all have it. It's the light of Christ, you know? Right. And it grows brighter. Sometimes it gets dimmer, but that's a part of life. It doesn't always mean that you're doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it does, and you just readjust and repent. But a lot of times it's just part of mortality is having that darkness and having that quiet from heaven for a while. Yeah. I hate it. <laughs> it's the worst time it's of so life. It's hard. But it's hard. So but many times it always just, goes away. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of times where I was just like, I just want to be with God. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want to be dead, you know? Right. Like, <laughs> I just want to be know. up there. Uh, <laughs> just want to hug Rock him. and roll in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with wishing that. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's like, I wish you could rock and roll with me right yeah. now, too. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. That. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have any last thoughts you want to share about personal revelation? <laughs> I don't know. Personal revelation is just personal, and sometimes it's meant to stay personal. Sometimes it's meant to help other people, too. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's important to be careful about what you deem as personal revelation, especially about, like, doctrines of the church mm-hmm. and stuff. But... When it comes to your own progression, your own salvation and um, peace, personal revelation is so, so important. I heard this quote once um, that said, I don't know if it was Joseph Smith, but somebody said that we can't gain salvation without personal revelation. And I think that could mean a lot of things, but personal revelation could even just be receiving answers about the truthfulness mm-hmm. of certain doctrines and receiving your own testimony. Yeah. Because salvation is so personal. Yeah. And it's really between you and God. I, I don't know. I just think it's so beautiful that it's such a deep personal con- connection yeah. with Him. So, basically wrap it up (laughs) it's important it's important for yourself yeah it's important for others to help others yeah and helps you get back home helps you want to go back home too yeah yeah Yeah, it's like you can make covenants that help you get home but like if you don't really understand them or or care about them and feel like they're sacred and all that then it's like, are you really living them, right. you know? And so yep. it's important to have that testimony of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today, Laura. Yes, You're thanks so for awesome. having me. You're so <laughs> awesome. This was fun. Yeah. Oh. Well, like and subscribe, everybody. Thank you for listening.